good evening and a hearty welcome to news R. In this edition, ECOWAS delegation pays court support on President Bureau at State House. Sierra Leone joins the world over to observe the International Labor Day. And five-man technical team from the United Arab Emirates, Red Crescent, holds talks with Vice President Julian Jarrod. Well, these stories and more plus business and special news are lined up in this edition of News on with me, Alice Marina Tyson. Stay close. Welcome back. Vice President Dr. Jul Mohamed Julde Jallo has reaffirmed government's commitment in ensuring that gender analysis is embedded within all national development programs. He was speaking during the International Workers' Day at the Mieta Conference Center, Brookfield. Thomas Neal reports. The government of Sierra Leone declared May 1st public holiday in Sierra Leone. This commendable action showcased the country's determination to join other nations across the world to commemorate International Workers' Day, which underscores the value government attaches to workers in this country. The International Workers' Day is a day to celebrate workers' contribution to the socio-economic development of the country. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Jul Lejalo said this year's theme and gender-based violence for sustainable national development could not have been chosen at a more appropriate time given the overwhelming gender discrimination in the workplace. He said examples abound all over the world to show the importance of equality and the power of women in leadership to change the world. Vice President Dr. Julia Jallo said as a way to actualize the resolve, government will continue to lead in the implementation of the Agenda for Prosperity Pillar 8, Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment, which reinforces government commitment to addressing gender equality and women's empowerment that is critical to ending gender-based violence in the country. We now have a strong global pathway to achieving this equality through the Sustainable Development Goals, which sets out an action plan to end poverty and injustice and gender equality as a key part of that plan. Ladies and gentlemen, nearly all of the agenda's goals have a gender component. We goal five focusing specifically on gender equality. Goal five states that achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that Sierra Leone has been a highly patriarchal society with institutionalized gender inequality, exacerbated by discriminatory customs, particularly with relation to marriage property rights and sexual offenses which Madam Chia has clearly underlined during her introductory statement. The country director Kia International, Evaris Sindai Gaya, said ending gender-based violence for sustainable development is a theme that is important to his organization, adding that the protection of women and the prevention of gender-based violence is also fundamental to Kia's work in over 40 countries worldwide. The president, Sierra Leone Labor Congress, Jennings Wright, said the theme and gender-based violence for sustainable national development symbolizes the Congress' avid attention for gender parity in all spheres of human endeavors. The executive director of Legal Aid Board, Pamata Claire Cartin Antils, referred to the working environment as a place of uncertainty and called on government to speedily address the concerns of the working populace. Right. It's going to come here to also talk about some of the issues. Casualization. Casualization. The legal aid board has got to court on casualization. We have a company. His Excellency, sir, we're happy you started attending some of these functions pertaining to some of the issues in the country. We have a company in Clinton, for instance. We have over 120 of their employees. Some of them have worked for 13 years. And they are paid on a daily basis as daily wage. They don't have medical, they don't have leave, they don't have promotion, they don't have anything. A good number of these 
establishment. Don't pay workers even the minimum wage, which is 500,000 years. It is possible to address the challenges of gender inequality if there is a political will to domesticate, enforce the laws and create the enabling environment that favors women's empowerment. For News Hour in Freetown, Thomas Neal reporting. ECOWAS delegation headed by President Jean-Claude Brew and Vice President have paid a court to call on President Julius Madabio at State House. The team congratulated him on his victory and also discussed issues on regional integration and development. Our Masire has more. The ECOWAS Commission President Jean-Claude Brew, on behalf of ECOWAS, congratulated President Bio on his victory, saying that they are in Sierra Leone to discuss about regional reintegration, consolidation of democracy and development as Sierra Leone as a member of the ECOWAS Commission. Mr. Brew informed President Bio that they are also in the country to further discuss on different developmental programs and see how they can come to the aid of the country. to do that on May 12th during the inauguration ceremony, but since I'm here, I would like to really reiterate all my congratulations for uh, achieving this highest level of uh, responsibility in Sierra Leone. As I said uh, to the President, we are here to be, have the opportunity to exchange with you on uh, various uh, issues regarding, of course, uh, cooperation between uh, ECOWAS and Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is a member of ECOWAS, so it is your organization, and as such our role is to work very, very closely with you, as we do with all member countries, to really foster uh, regional integration and help the various countries in their program of development and so forth. So we are pleased to be here, and again, thank you very, very much for receiving. President Julius Madabio commended the delegation for the visit and for the role played during the electioneering process and for what ECOWAS has been doing in the West African sub-region. We work on this region and the State House. Uh, we definitely appreciate as a country your continued support and commitment to um, peace, development and social progress in this country. So we are not surprised by your presence here. We are deeply involved in all of these organizations and um, I want to use this opportunity to say thank you for all the support. Uh, the ECOWAS um, um, elections team was here, uh, the observation team, <clears throat> and uh, they played a very critical role in assuring that we had a peaceful um, and credible uh, process I must admit that um, you also gave them the sort of room to to quickly change their mandate I, and uh, we are able to deal with a lot of critical issues that uh, arose as a result of that. I want to use this opportunity to say thank you, <coughs> especially for what ECOWAS has been doing around West Africa and um, in terms of peace. Of course, we have a lot to do in terms of uh, economic and um, other areas. But I must say thank you, and I'm very happy to receive you in Britain. Thank you. The Vice President of the ECOWAS Commission, Finda Kruma, and Thim congratulated President Bio on his victory, during which the President of the ECOWAS Bank for Investment, Bashid Info, updated the President about the various activities relating to Sri Lanka and also funds allocated to the country as well. Two, two. And 
the details are attached as annexed to this document. Um, we just had uh, uh, an offer, end of order for motion machine here. We forwarded this here. And given that we have given that motion, we have given a list of uh, areas of priority for the government, basically in the water sector, in the health sector, and in the energy sector. So we have an advice on projects here. We are involved in the creation of projects in, in, in Sierra Leone for future financing by the bank. President Bio assured them of his continued support, calling on them to support the country in the development process in stabilizing the economy. In another engagement, the ambassador of Côte d'Ivoire, Dr. Femi Kweku, and representatives of the Women's Forum paid a courtesy call on President Bio. The ambassador of Côte d'Ivoire briefed the president about his visit to his country on request of the president of Côte d'Ivoire and congratulated President Bio on his victory. The Women's Forum Network President, Maud Peacock, on behalf of the women of Sierra Leone, congratulated President Bio on his victory and also gave a brief background about the organization that has been working in the interests of women. She commended the president about the different measures put in place after his election, one of them which is the transition team that is taking records of the previous government, assuring President Bio of Women's Forum continuous support. Maud Peacock also appealed to the president for significant gender budgeting. We also thank you immensely for the transitional governance team. We have here in our midst one of us, Mrs. Melus Cabo. She is a consultant in the Women's Forum. And also Mrs. Kona Koroma. You put in place to identify the status of ministries, departments, and agencies as well as executive order number one on revenue mobilization, all of which go to demonstrate your commitment to ensuring accountability and transparency in government operations. Against this background, we want to assure you of our unflinching support to your excellency and the government of Sierra Leone in your strides for national cohesion. To enhance economic ventures, improve service delivery, and promotion of the political and socioeconomic empowerment of women. President Bio commended the women for their visit as women's issues are pertinent in the area of development, calling on them to embark on various engagements regarding affirmative action. President Bio assured them of inclusive governance. Along this path, it is mostly women who have been there for me. So I know that, and I believe that um, besides being a significant part of the population, more than 50%, uh, no nation that is disastrous of developing can afford to take half of its population and just keep it aside and say we will use the name. So, but of course we know an imbalance has been created over the years, uh, part of our culture, part of how people perceive things, and um, the equal opportunities have not been afforded to women, which is what the situation is at, at the moment, and that is what we are trying to correct and readjust. So um, while we are doing that um, collectively, we need to be engaged in dialogue to, so to be able to do some of these things. President of 5050 Group, Dr. Fatuta Ki, appreciated President Bio for what he has perceived will be good for the women, as tradition and culture has been a barrier for not allowing women to participate in politics. President of the 5050 Women's Group informed the president about the different capacity building programs that they have been organizing for women to play a significant role in politics, assuring him of their support and hope to see gender friendly laws as they want him to succeed in his work. SABC TV News I in Freetown, how are mostly reporting. <laughs> delegation to Sierra Leone says he is optimistic that the interpartisan umpires between the ruling SLPP and the APC will be resolved. He 
Honorable Snow was speaking to journalists after a closed-door meeting with the leadership of Parliament at Tower Hill. Nasi Udin Koma reports. Honorable Edwin Melvin Snow informed journalists that their primary mission is on fact-finding on the incident that took place in the world of Parliament, which resulted to a very challenging political situation in the country. Well, we are here to head up. I had a small delegation from the ECOWAS Parliament on facts finding based on the situation that uh, have occurred here at this Parliament for the last week or so to facts finding and then to see how best we can mediate with our brothers and sisters in Parliament for us to have the people's business going forward. Well, I don't think, I think um, so far it seems promising. We, as you know, uh, that uh, and, uh, Abbas Bono was elected as Speaker. And coming to the country, to the parliament, we first have to meet with the leadership of the parliament. So we just had a very, very fruitful meeting with the speaker. Uh, he sounds very willing to have this matter resolved. Uh, we will now be meeting with the opposition side and uh, we'll see how best we all can have an understanding too, so that we can move the process forward and move the country forward. Nonetheless, the members of the ECOWAS fact-finding team have expressed optimism that they will do their best to ensure that reconciliation for national cohesion is achieved at the end of the mission the team is to meet with the leadership of the APC party. SLBC News, Nasiruddin Koroma. Presidential initiative for teachers and introduced the best national teachers award program. The president was speaking during the prize giving and OBA award ceremony of the Bull government secondary school. After the prize giving ceremony, President Julius Madabio was also crowned as Chief of Chiefs. How am I has one. After the well-attended ceremony at the Bull Secondary School campus, we have past and present peoples, including President Julius Madabio, teachers and parents witnessed the prize-giving ceremony. President Bio is the first people of both schools to become president of Sierra Leone, and his admission number was 3919. Over 30 years ago, President Bio started his schooling at the Bull School, which was established in 1906 for sons and nominees of chiefs, as Julius Bio himself is a son of a paramount chief. President Bio highlighted the purpose of the presidential initiative for teachers, which he said will improve their conditions of service. President Bio also spoke on plans to establish the best National Teachers Award program across the country to honor and recognize the dedication and commitment of teachers. President Bio also reaffirmed his commitment to free education program, which he said is the bedrock of his developmental agenda. President Bio also reaffirmed his commitment to free education program, which he said is the bedrock of his development agenda to transform the country. President Bio did a conducted tour of the campus and ate the food that is normally prepared for the peoples as a way to reminiscences. He was awarded as the first Bull School people to achieve the highest position in the country. 34 odd years ago, 39-19, Bill Julius Mada was just one of you, seated like one of you, dressed like one of you, attentive and inquisitive like one of you but not as naughty as most of you so who would have thought that 34 years later i will be addressing you today as president of the republic of syria Leone. not even my principal God said, well, he would not have pred uh, predicted that. In fact, I could not have done so twice in 34 years. Of course, both school is taking the credit. Where is the military? Where is the military? by two formidable institutions, the Bo School and the Armed Forces of the Republic of Syria. 
So for me, addressing you here today is a momentous occasion because our generation has made history. All speakers here today have said the same thing, that today is an historic moment for this illustrious school. I will forever remember this day, and I'm sure this day will inspire all of you to believe that if I can make it to this point, you also can do it. This award is therefore not only for 3919 Leo Julius Mada, but for each and every one of you, both school boys and members of Auburn. This achievement is the very reason that inspired and motivated our forefathers to establish this school to raise sons and nominees of paramount chiefs in leadership positions in every academic discipline, including politics. I'm sure this was to provide the leadership that this country truly deserves. So my election as president of the Republic of Sierra Leone is a dream come true for, the, for our visionary forefathers. To our boys present here today, this achievement is an inspiration to all of you. Like you, 34 years ago, I was seated here, gaping in rapt attention and in awe, looking at leaders like God, 592, Dr. Samabanya, the late 724, Honorable S.I. Kuruma, the, the former Vice President, to name but a few. To all the pupils present here today, because 3919 Dio Julius has made it as President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, it's an indication that you also could be the President of the Republic one day. Various past peoples who attended the prize-giving ceremony updated the president about activities that they have been back in. And Dr. Alfawuri is the current president of the Old Bosco Boys Association, had this to say. We had Shaka Stevens come through the gates of the Bosco in the 80s. We had His Excellency Alaji Amati Tijan Kaba as well in the mid-2020s. Each of them had to be adopted as both school boys. We had to give them a both school number. This is the first time we do not have to adopt the president of Sierra Leone. This is the first time we have the son of the soil as president of the Republic of Sierra Leone. This is the first time we have 3919 Julius Mada Bio as the president of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Uh, it is one people in one school, but we have to make sure we have one people in one country. We cannot afford to preside over a divided nation. After the prize giving ceremony, President Bio was installed as chief of chiefs by a galaxy of paramount chiefs. I to thank the paramount chiefs here and to assure them that as one of them, I will always stand by them, work with them to bring back the glory of Chief Tensi to that institution. I'm proud, I'm proud for being the son and even the grandson of a paramount chief. And today, it's a great pride and honor to see paramount chiefs in their tra traditional regalia to come and march in front of us all. This is what Bosco is all after, and this is what we have seen. I've spoken about harmony, social harmony, and national cohesion. This is what Bosco signifies. I'm touched, and I want to say thank you to all the primary chiefs, those who are here and those who are not here, that as of, from this point, we will work as a nation, we will work to make sure that Sierra Leone is united again, because the chief guns constitute the building blocks of this country. If you have effective leadership at the, at the chief level, you will have 
the very beautiful country to govern. I believe in that, and I believe that they should be given the power, the support necessary to let them function as they did before. So to all the Brown Manches, I'm proud to be one of you, and I thank you for the honor bestowed upon me today. On Sunday, the 89th annual Thanksgiving service was also organized at the school campus where Reverend Joseph Freeman, in his sermon, preached on determination, dedication, and devotion, thanking God for the pupils and the school administration. Reverend Momofo and other servants of God presented a Bible and special prayer for the President and the First Lady Fatima Biu. President Biu also joined the March Pass along the main street of Bo City. SABC TV News are in Freetown. How must we reporting? United Arab Emirates Red Crescent have paid a cut to call on Vice President Dr. Mohammed Shul Dajalo at his Tower Hill office. As Thomas Nill reports, they are in the country to implement the agreement made between Monitoring of Health and the United Arab Emirates. Vice President, the head of the technical team, Saeed al mazuri informed the Vice President that part of the agreement with government is to renovate and equip the Oladuin Children's Hospital, adding that they are pleased with the ongoing work at the site, which is stated will be completed within three to four months. He also informed the Vice President that the team is also involved in the construction of boreholes in the country, adding that 70% of that has been achieved. Responding, Vice President Dr. Mohamed Jul Dejalo thanked the team for their interventions, especially in the health and water sectors, stressing that both are amongst top priorities of government. He said during a high-level meeting last week, the issues of the Oladuin Hospital and Malloy's children were discussed extensively and called on the team to expand their operations on pregnant and lactating mothers. Vice President Julia Jallo called on the technical team to help improve in the water situation on the capital as the Guma facilities can no longer cater for millions of people residing in the city. The technical team is expected to visit ministries, departments and agencies before departing. For News Hour in Freetown, Thomas Neal reporting. in Sierra Leone has opened a Chinese teaching center at the Joy Chinese Hospital. The center was opened by the Chinese ambassador to Sierra Leone. Happy Batukoma sent in this report read by Maria Masuma. The Chinese ambassador to Sierra Leone, Mr. Wu Peng, advised people to learn Chinese as it will help to strengthen the bilateral relationship between China and Sierra Leone. Superintendent of Sierra China Friendship Hospital, Dr. Alex Kanu, said that the establishment of the Chinese Study Center will help the people of Sierra Leone to study Mandarin. Dr. Alex Kanu commended the Confucius Institute for their laudable venture and asked staff to get refreshers training. If you don't know, know it today, the population of China is 1.4 billion people. So if you can speak Chinese, it's a great opportunity to you to communicate with 1.4 billion people without an interpreter. Is that not wonderful? Yes. I hope that this training center will represent the beginning of a long and beneficial project between Chinese medical team and us. Needless to say, your works of the 19th batch of Chinese medical team will be remembered for a very long time. Chief Medical Officer, Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Brian Makabu, pledged his ministry's commitment to the Chinese medical team in Sierra Leone at all times. The Chinese medical team leader, Dr. Liang Liu, had this to say. and the mutual understandings as well as a bridge of friendship and cooperation between us.
watching News Arc live from the Sterling Broadcasting Corporation. More news stories after the break. The Sierra Leone Police, in partnership with Bike Riders Union in the Western area, has organized a one-day pack to pack sensitization with commercial bike riders to desist from plying on the restricted central business district areas. The sensitization was held at three different parks, Dwarzak, Model New Road, and Congo Cross Parks in Freetown. Amanash Brahma files in this report. Central Business District are prohibited for commercial bike riders to ply by the past government. But of recent, some bike riders have been disregarding the law and continue to ply the CBD area, thereby putting the lives of pilots in danger. National Traffic Coordinator, Chief Superintendent of Police, Blah, said bike riding is a profession and called on bike riders to take it seriously. She admonished them to be decent while riding their bikes. She noted that they will restart the operation and called on them to stop lying the restricted central business district areas and encouraged them to be law abiding as ignorance of the law is no excuse. The way where they appear in the public, you na rider, you for dress fine. Two, so, you for make sure say you bike a license and you get insure. Three, you get your gears the way for ride. You know, say you for ride now. Hey, you you for you forget helmet. License. Yes, you ride that back. You forget license. Don't you get? You forget for ride you with your helmet. All land day. Don't shut it. Helmet. Exactly. Oh, when you sabi. No, no, left hand. I speed the truck. Uh huh. I follow the yeri. Done. Thank you na restrictions. Thank you na restriction. For long na no ride. That sat inside the inside the CBD. Una no for God day, for God's sake. Una no for God day, una girl so una for, for the ride. Do ya? Not so for now, una community policing. Una need for can jump, go begin one after una. Na talk who they for talk to una. Na I make with office you open 24 7 to una. Any tell for save and buy, then go you go give police money, una why you read and day. Western Region Chairman, Ceylon Bike Riders Union, Abulai Conte said they are determined to engage with the commercial bike riders and they need not to apply the restricted stimulus. He affirmed that bike riders have been encountering challenges with police officers and called on bike riders to abide by the traffic rules. In the essence of this installation, first thing we determine to make room for talk to riders, to make them say the Lord in this country has to win at the CBD. The CBD, me and you throw the one commercial motorcycle, they will avoid the CBD. We don't say we will not go, we will not go. Now, secondly, we can use two scratch elements. Anybody that use bike, motorcycle, make you use two, two elements, whereby you as rider and the pillow to get elements. And again, with the pass of the size again, we ride as a way you will ride all night. We are in the morning before you go take motorcycle, we are go wash, or you other person in the bike, where the person will appear and meet. We don't want somebody to ride Bike riders from different parks expressed an appreciation to the team for the timely meeting and expressed dissatisfaction over the way and manner the police have been harassing and arresting them unlawfully. <laughs> Shaka CB Street, Panamba Road, Kisi Road, any bike man who will not catch you, he deserves the punishment where he deserves. Like this Jomo Kiata Road, that Bufis area, Table, uh, 
by force. Turn better. Let them left the game. Now, this is a new government. Good already now. Bembe for say, we go be law abiding people there. Good already Bembe for law obey. But especially like we the rider there too. We did not forget life thing. And we do scratch elements there. Better than they were for so. Let no policeman not go embarrass me. We all know say that we survive with it. Yes, Emily. And uh, this this bad guy and the police not so new thing to me. See, I don't police and the bad guy that and I hope say CBD you know new to me. That's why and uh, they don't say now when they talk about CBD CBD. But the problem how they encounter in this bad guy the CBD when they give you say and the CBD some of the officers there when they left some of the lawless officers there when they left through the CBD then come back outside and give it for free. And when they all them back then they went go with them. When they go with them back. So some of them policemen they are in the sand. They understand it, and then they can mix, and then they can mix the whole CBD. Okay. They called on their colleagues to license their bikes, use crash helmets, and to ride within the ambit of the law. They appeal to the police to stop arresting them on areas that are now restricted, stressing that bike riding is where they get their living. Building schools nationwide and promoting girl child education is one of the major activities of the New Life Ministries International since its establishment 25 years ago. General Overseer of the New Life Ministries International, Bishop Archibald Cole, made the statement during the official launching of the Silver Jubilee celebrations of the New Life Ministries International. Eva Jasko reports. Hundreds of people showed up to celebrate New Life Ministries International 25 years of miraculous existence due to its achievement in education with 15 schools and 97 branches in Sierra Leone, including five international branches in the USA, UK, Australia, Gambia, and Liberia. The General Overseer of the New Life Ministries International, Bishop Archibald Cole, added that they are not only celebrating the church, Silver Jubilee, but also several activities the church has made, among which the establishment of an NGO called New Life Development Services in partnership with UNICEF to promote girl child education in Kano District. New Life got 15 schools right now, as I talk to you. New Life got NGO, uh, NGO way, in fact, we NGO now, one of the NGO we rehabilitate the rebels step in Akono, so we, we NGO we call New Life Development Services, and we NGO also um, have for partner with UNICEF for the girl child education, uh, you know, at, at the same corner area, and uh, the building of schools, so we have uh, a Bible Institute, Bible College at the moment. So as, as a church, we have academic schools, we have Bible school, and we have uh, NGO. It said the establishment of the church was a calling from God when he was ministering in Liberia and that they started with eight adults and seven children as in a classroom at the municipal primary school. Today, they can boast of thousands of people worshiping in the church every week. Launching a Silver Jubilee anniversary, the General Overseer of the New Life Ministries International, Bishop Archibald Cole, said there are several activities lined up which will start on June 5 and end on June 10, which include musical explosion, dinner, conferences, revival, and thanksgiving to dedicate the cathedral to God Almighty. He cited that the event will be graced by international guest ministers from Ghana, Zimbabwe, and United States, and national guest ministers like Bishop Abu Kuruma, Bishop Julius Laga, Bishop Sam Jolie, and Reverend Matthew Lansana. He noted that his role and contribution in the body of Christ has been remarkable, serving as Indian Vice President for eight years in the Pentecostal Fellowship of Sierra Leone and former Coordinator for Intercessor for Sierra Leone and President of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Sierra Leone. Co-General Overseer New Life Ministries International, Reverend Irene Cole, said the church has gone through difficult times in acquiring the land where the miracle city is now situated.
She emphasized that women ministry has been their major success due to their devotion and contributions that the greater majority of the church is the women's ministry. She noted that the women's ministry has made a great impact in the growth and expansion of the ministry and that they have lots of female pastors. Several contributions were made by members including the choir to grace the Silver Jubilee of the New Life Ministries International due to its achievement in education and religious principles for the past 25 years. Eva Jasko, Freetown. And with that item, news hour comes to a close. But before we go, quick look at the top stories. ECOWAS delegation has paid a courtesy call on President Leo at State House. Sierra Leone has joined the world over to observe the International Labor Day. And five men technical team from the United Arab Emirates Red Crescent has held talks with Vice President June Dejalo. Well, that's all in this edition of News Hour Broadcast Live on the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. On behalf of my news editor, Brent Mansourik, and the team tonight, I am Alice Mariamit Thompson, wishing the rest of your night as glorious. Thanks for your time. Keep watching the SLBC.